Two years ago, I made a video of me eating at every dining hall at NYU. A lot has changed since then, so I want to make another video on dining halls. But this time, I'm gonna up the ante. For the next week, I'm going to be eating nothing but NYU dining hall food. I'll be visiting a variety of the school's dining halls, as well as the new locations, and explain how meal plans work in general. Let's count it down. For the first meal, I have something different. I went to Crave NYU, which was not here last semester. They actually built a new building called Paulson, and it has a new dining hall and a new cafe. So the dining hall is called Crave NYU. They have a lot of different varieties. So today I tried something different. This is what we have. A chicken and beef ball something? Bowl? I don't know. But it's like with rice and quinoa, so... I don't know, I just thought I'd try something new. NYU's dining halls changed a bit, man. They keep developing. They keep coming up with new ones. They had like vegan stuff, banh mi stuff, hamburgers, bowls, salads. They had just like, just about everything that you could have. I think that's why the line is so long. 30 minute waits, these are unheard of before Crave entered NYU. Oh wow, that's actually pretty good. That's not bad either, that's not bad. Oh my god, I can't believe this is only day one of the challenge. You have six more days to go. Which, I don't think it's a bad challenge because NYU food's genuinely not bad. I don't know why people like really like crap on NYU dining hall food saying like, oh god, it's so bad or something. I think they're just looking at the wrong places to go to for food because genuinely, it's not bad once you consider like the prices and everything. Crave NYU is NYU's newest dining hall. It's in the Paulson Center, a building that opened in fall 2023 that also has Cafe 181. Crave is so popular, mostly because it's new and they offer a great variety of food, that 30 minute long lines are common, so make sure you order ahead. Crave is now part of NYU's 10 dining halls, including Kimmel, Lipton, 18 Below, Downstein, Upstein, Kosher Eatery, Third North, Palladium, and U-Haul. NYU also has four cafes, Cafe 181 in Paulson, Pete's Coffee in Kimmel, Starbucks, and Dunkin' at U-Haul. I'm only going to focus on the Manhattan campus in this video, but if you're curious, the Brooklyn campus has one dining hall called Jasper Kane and a newly opened cafe called Cafe 370. There's no Kusha 아무데도 없는 데를 봐라. 이 집은 디저트가 맛있어. 디저트. 아무데도 안 파니까. So, how do NYU's meal plans work anyway? Every NYU student has dealt with meal plans before. That's because they're mandatory for all first-year students, as well as transfer students. There are multiple meal plans to choose from. As of the 2023-24 to 24 school year, there are 11 choices, from 95 flex all the way up to 300 flex. Brooklyn has its own set of meal plans, but again, we won't be focusing on that in this video. Each meal plan has two components, meal swipes and dining dollars. Meal swipes are how many meals you can buy in a semester. For example, in all-you-can-eat dining halls like Downstein, Third North, Lipton, and Kosher Eatery, meals cost one swipe regardless of how many food items you get. But for any other dining hall, one food item equals one meal swipe. So if you get, for example, a burger, sushi, and a smoothie, that's three meal swipes. In other words, it's more expensive than all-you-can-eat, but it's the perfect place to spend a lot of meal swipes if you ever need to. Dining dollars, on the other hand, are just money. Think of it as your bank account for food. The cash value is stored inside your NYU ID. Students tend to use dining dollars for smaller snacks and food items, like at NYU markets or cafes. For example, I always get drinks from NYU Starbucks using dining dollars. You could also use dining dollars at dining halls instead of meal swipes. An average dining hall meal costs about $10 to $15, so if you weren't using meal swipes, you would pay using dining dollars or a credit card. The different meal plans essentially come down to how often you want to eat in a week. For example, the most expensive plan, the 300 Flex, offers 300 meal swipes for the entire semester, which is about 19 meals per week. Assuming you're eating three meals a day, 
That means you're basically eating only NYU food all the time. If you think that's a bit too much, you can opt for cheaper options, which is less meals per week. For comparison, we as freshmen started out with a 225 flex plan as a default, which is 14 meals per week. On the very bottom of the list, there is the 95 flex plan, which offers only six meals per week. So perfect for those who only eat at dining halls occasionally. And the difference between flex and flex plus is just $100 extra dining dollars if you really wanted it. 거머쥐란 메뉴가 똑같아요. 내 생각으론 가장 괜찮은 NIU 식당이 아닐까 싶어. 여기가 가장 그나마 고급진? 근데 저렇게 조금 얘기했어. 11시부터 2시에 월부터 그 the type of meal plan that you need to get differs by what type of dorm you live in. For example, first years and transfer students living in traditional dorms have to be enrolled in at least a 200 flex plan. On the other hand, those living in apartment style dorms, which have kitchens, only need to be enrolled in at least 120. Since I'm neither a first year nor a transfer student and don't live in a dorm either, I don't need a meal plan, but obviously I have one. That's why I'm making this video. I have the smallest one, the 95. It's uncommon for seniors to have meal plans, so I'm part of the ultra minority here. But I will say that it's convenient for people like me who spend a lot of time on campus and can easily get food cheaply at a dining hall because the cost of eating out is incredibly high in New York. Unless you're getting a lunch special at a restaurant, it's rare to get a meal under $20, especially because of New York's nearly 9% tax and 18% tip. Anyway, I take pride in finishing every meal plan I've ever had. I've had the 225 flex for all of freshman and sophomore years and the 95 flex for junior and senior fall. I've always spent mine up to the last meal swipe and dining dollar. This is also uncommon at NYU. Normally, you'll find a lot of people bashing on the quality of the dining hall food to the point where they choose to eat out instead. Honestly though, I think it's an exaggeration. It's not that bad. Unless you were raised eating at Michelin star restaurants your whole life, dining hall food is perfectly fine for what you pay for. I do recommend going to the better dining halls though, like 18 Below. That's a lot of people's favorite dining hall because of their highest quality food in all of NYU. I am at the halfway point of this challenge. We are on day four. It's going better than I thought. I thought I'd get tired of it easily, but thanks to NYU's variety of food, they have like a lot of dining halls and a lot of like different cuisines. I've been fine, honestly. I haven't been craving Korean food or anything like that. I will say though, I wish there was a bit more variety in breakfast. For the past four days, I've had Dunkin' Donuts every day. Dunkin' offers sides. They offer fruits or hash browns. This is what we have kind of like little chicken nuggets, but they offer the most for a single meal slice, which is why I just have to go to Dunkin'. Today I have a French vanilla flavored coffee. I didn't know what to expect, but that kind of caught me off guard. All right, and here we have a sausage, egg, and cheese uh, croissant. Yeah, I'm gonna run out of breakfast items to try Dunkin'. I need to go to like Pete's or something. I don't know, it's just for the experience. I really would rather not go to Pete's Coffee because they don't have like size or anything. All right, let's try a hash brown now. These kind of look like tater tots, but they call it hash browns. Well, I've had these every day now for the past four days, so I'm really kind of used to it. But yeah, hash browns, uh, they're my favorite side. A cool thing about meal plans is that you can use them with Grubhub. You first have to link your NYU account with your Grubhub app, and then you'll see your meal plan balance. After that, you can order ahead and select dining halls or cafes. This is useful for places like Starbucks if you want to cut in front of the in-store line. I use Grubhub all the time for my meal plan because sometimes in-person ordering takes forever, and ordering ahead saves a lot of time. You can choose to use meal swipes or dining dollars in Grubhub as well. For many dining halls, if you press on them, it'll give you two options, dining dollars or credit or meal exchange. If you press dining dollars or credit, all food items will be listed in dollars. If you press meal exchange, the same menu will show up in meal swipes. <laughs> So for some reason, Kimmel was blasting new jeans on their speakers, and since I don't want to get copyrighted, I'm just going to do a quick little voiceover here. I hadn't been to Kimmel in years at this point, and I definitely hadn't sat down at Kimmel and eaten because uh, the indoor dining facilities have been closed throughout the entire pandemic. And after like freshman and sophomore year, I just never went back to Kimmel. So yeah, it was a very new perspective. To tell you more about Kimmel, I'd say it's pretty similar to Palladium, except it has a bit more variety in my opinion, but I think Palladium has better quality. And I might be saying this because in freshman year, I had sushi at Kimmel and the rice just crumbled in my mouth. And that's probably the worst food 
I'd ever had in my life. So I might be biased here. There's a website for NYU's meal plans where you can check your balance. You can also buy or change meal plans on this website. Meal plans expire every semester, so you need to renew it. Any meal swipes remaining in the fall won't carry over to the spring. However, any dining dollars left over in the fall will carry over to the spring. Nothing carries over from spring to fall when the school year changes. By the way, you might have noticed that the website talks about campus cash. If you're wondering what that is, well, I'm not sure either. In my four years at NYU, I've never heard anyone mention campus cash or use it. The idea is similar to dining dollars, is that you can use it in non-NYU locations as well, but again, I know nothing about it. It also doesn't come with your meal plan, so it's not really relevant. Right, it's the second last day, and uh, as you can see here, I spent two meal swipes. We don't have much left. I'm actually running very close to running out, so I'm gonna pace myself very well. Today I got, what did I get? I got, whoa, what is that? I have no idea what that is, man. I have no idea. What did I get? A buffalo chicken and bacon sandwich. And of course, you can't forget this when you're going to Upstein. Smoothies. Oh, their smoothies are great, especially the strawberry banana one. I'm a huge fan of that. I also have two Lay's here, but I'm not going to have them right now. But yeah, this is all part of the two meal plans. Oh, it's so salty. Oh my god, I just had physical whiplash from how much salt there is. Oh my god, I still taste it. I won't lie, at this point, I kind of miss rice. Like, I don't need it, but I kind of want it. Like, if you go f without rice for a long period of time, especially if you were someone who had rice frequently, you start to realize how good rice is. So people who don't eat rice, I think they're genuinely missing out. They are, they don't know what kind of new world awaits them. I guess now it's time to talk about the hours of operations of dining halls. As you can see here, each dining hall runs on a different schedule. Residential dining places, especially Downstein, 3rd North, and Lipton, open hours earlier, the fastest being at 7 a.m., while retail dining tends to open later on in the day. The latest a dining hall closes is 11 p.m. for U-Haul. So whether it's early morning or late at night, you have choices available. All dining halls and cafes operate during the weekdays, but only about half of them are open in the weekends. My favorite dining hall, 18 Below, for example, has the shortest operation time out of all dining halls, open for only three hours a day from Monday through Friday. The fact that only a handful of places are open during the weekends, along with the fact that residential dining always takes an hour long break in the afternoon, makes Saturday from 3 to 4 p.m. the hungriest hour with only two places open. At least now we have Crave to fill the void. Before that, your only choice was Starbucks. So in that aspect, Crave is pretty important. You might be thinking that it's uncommon to be hungry specifically during that time, but you'll be surprised at how many times that happened in my freshman year where I would count the minutes until dining halls opened back up at four. Ah, me too. <laughs> 가져갈 가방이 없어서 아무래도 여기서 먹고 갈것 같아. 얘네가 몇년 전부터 가방이 없어서 종이 가방을 너무 불편해졌어. 하, 그냥 그 자리에서 먹고 가거나 자기 가방 들고 가거나 조심 알아라. 캘리포니아 버거라고 아보카도가 들어가 있는데 참 신기해. 여기 내가 인생에서 두 번째로 먹는데 진짜 딱두 번째. 야 진짜 오랜만이다. The most difficult part of these weekly challenges is that I need a guaranteed one week time frame where I'm barely hanging out with anybody. Because if someone wants to meet up with me and eat out, well, I can't do that. This was definitely the case a year ago when I spent a week sleeping during the day and awake at night. And also that time I ate only street food for a week. So I'm glad I got through this challenge without any bumps on the way. All right, so time for the results. So for the past seven days, I visited 11 out of 14 dining locations all except Lipton, Pete's Coffee, and Cafe 181. The challenge was not as hard as I thought because NYU does offer a lot of variety of food. Their menu is different every day, so it's sort of hard to get tired of eating at dining halls. Granted, I wouldn't want to do an extra week of this, but you'd be surprised at how much NYU tries with their food. They put effort in offering kosher, halal, gluten-free, vegetarian, and vegan options, none of which are applicable to me because I eat anything, but for people who need it, it's good that it's there. I averaged about four meal swipes a day, and I only spent dining dollars at Starbucks. So I spent a total of 28 meal swipes and $21.80 worth of dining dollars. Converting this to actual money, that comes to just over $436.20. If you try to get the cost per meal swipe, it comes to about $14.80, which is pretty high because I have the smallest meal plan. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, hopefully this table makes sense to you. 
But TLDR, the cost per meal swipe is cheaper for larger plans because NY is incentivizing you to buy more expensive meal plans. If I had the 300 flex plan where each meal swipe is $5 cheaper, the total cost would be only about $291. Now, if you paid for the exact same food I ate with a credit card, it's most likely going to be cheaper, probably around $375, including tax. This is because of retail dining locations. For example, using a credit card, a sandwich at Kluckstein costs $9. A bubble tea at Palladium also costs nearly $9. A burger and fries from U-Haul cost around $10. But if you're using a meal plan, they all cost one meal swipe each. So yeah, that means you'd be spending a $15 meal swipe on a $9 drink. If you think about that, you start to realize how expensive NYU's meal plans really are. Unless you have a large meal plan, credit cards are more cost efficient. So you might ask why I still use a meal swipe for a drink from Palladium, but that's because with so many meal swipes to use, you stop caring about the actual costs. That's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video of an eating challenge mixed with detailed information about NYU's meal plan. If you found it helpful, do leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you later.